Once upon a time in the world of genetics, two identical twins were born. The two baby boys were named Jim and Tim Van Horn. All observable phenotypes were alike. This was no surprise because they were genetic clones. Their hair, eyes, behaviors were the same, including all their milestones. My oh my, they were definitely twin brothers. Then one day, their worlds changed when mommy and daddy stopped loving each other. No longer wanted to be husband and wife. Moved to two different cities and started a new life. Tim lived with mom and Jim lived with dad. Different environments, different experiences for both of the lads. As time went on, the most unfortunate thing happened. They contracted different illnesses, both hospitalized and saddened. But how is this possible? They were identical, you know? Same genotype means same phenotype, no? What was this phenomenon that causes alteration? Epigenetics was the reason, specifically methylation. Tim and Jim differ epigenetically but have the identical DNA. What is this epigenetics I keep on speaking of, you might say? All the cells in our bodies have the same DNA but necessarily don't know how to behave. Epigenetics provides instructions so the cells know what to do. For example, they'll follow the muscle cell lineage and will become a muscle cell slave. These instructions are provided through a chemical reaction known as methylation. Carbon and hydrogen form methyl groups. The small molecule is all that's needed for these alterations. Methylation is the covalent addition of methyl groups to DNA or histone protein, governing and directing DNA transcription like a university dean. Specifically, methyl groups target CPG islands, attaching to a cytosine residue. This stuff is fascinating. I know you're excited too. Methylation can silence the gene by hiding the promoter sequence, preventing the binding of RNA polymerase and eliminating transcription frequency. It can also cause overexpression of a certain gene, leading to a phenotype that shouldn't be seen. Cancers and obesity, just to name a few, these endless epigenetics issues can even affect you. Now let's see what happened to Jim who suffers from esophageal cancer. How's methylation going to provide the answer? The FHIT gene prevents overproliferation of epithelium cells, but since Jim was a smoker, the nicotine in his system induced FHIT methylation spells. Epithelial cells were no longer under control, always being rowdy and continuously on the roll. The cancer grew unstricted, nothing to stop the esophagus from being constricted. Moving on to Tim, let's talk about what happened to him. Eating a nutrient-poor diet led him on an obesity riot. Lack of methylation groups from hamburgers, fries, and shakes was certain. Resulting in the overexpression of obesity-linked genes known as TNF alpha and leptin. So you see that Jim and Tim had methylation differences induced by environmental factors. We can say genetics no longer was the main actor. Even though clones are the same genotypically, methylation can make them look different phenotypically. I hope you understood epigenetics, my friend, because this is the part where I say the end.